Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Avro and today's video will be about the stream argument which openai.create the completion method provides us with. In my opinion, it will be very useful and very attractive for a client who uses this completion method in our app, for example, and we can see the real time update of the response which this method gives us because we already got used to the chat GPT style of answering when we dump any prompt and all the response come in real time. And this idea of the video came from one of the comments which I received in one of my blog posts. Build your own chatbot with OpenAI GPT-3 Streamlit. And here you can see the comment section which I'm really grateful to him for providing us this suggestion. And I really wanted to uh, see how it works. Uh, API reference of the models and I really found there is something uh, called the stream. And this stream is basically helping us to update with the response which OpenAI is collecting on our prompt server sent events if I go out here you will see the event stream is a simple stream of text data which must be encoded uh, messages in the event stream are separated by pair of new line characters so all these things we know now using this stream which is a kind of a boolean argument once you put that in, in our uh, completion that create uh, method uh, we will get this real-time update but how we can get that in Python so for that first I tried that in Google Cooler and then I implemented in a streamlit web app unfortunately I couldn't do in the chatbot example which we tried before because uh, in chatbot we're using a different component called ST chat or chat component which is a streamlit component which does not allow us to create only single instance so I couldn't try that or maybe you guys know how to do that so Please feel free to write down in the comment section how we can implement that in the ST chat. But today we have a AI assistant kind of a text input box. We can dump our prompt and we can get the response out of it. I have already created that and implemented in a streamlit web app. So let's say I have a prompt like this, a streamlit web app with a prompt out there where you can ask anything. And we will see the difference between a streaming output and a non-streaming output. So let's see the difference between the no streaming and the streaming. In no streaming, it's like before where we tried it out and we saw how the response is dumped. By the way, if you have not watched those videos, please watch those videos. Uh, it's very much about OpenAI Streamlit usage and I'm pretty sure you guys will like it. And now we will implement a new feature called streaming, which will give us a real time update. So let's try to look at it, okay? We ask, uh, tell me, about open AI right and we just submit it this is without any streaming so basically the whole output will be done let's see how it gives us the output so we are sending a response the whole complete or creation method is generating the output and we see the output is out there so now we go for the streaming option okay and we submit this same question out here and we dump it as you see it's a real-time update of each and every response coming out and i'm pretty sure this is pretty cool to watch right this is something which you are used to with the chat gpt uh, verse you know we are always seeing this kind of response so this will be much more appreciated much more attractive in our eyes let's try to implement this first we will try in call up and then we'll try to implement that in using the streamlit web app front end so let's go to the coding section now Let's first see how we can implement the streaming argument in any Python environment. So I'm using Google Colab, you can use Jupyter Notebook, it works pretty well. So first we need to install the dependency. So one of the most critical dependencies is OpenAI. So we install uh, OpenAI using pip install function, then we import OpenAI. You have to uh, import the get pass uh, module. So this is just useful for entering our OpenAI API key. How we can get the OpenAI API key, I've discussed that in details in couple of my previous videos as well. So please check them out. The next part is the coding section, which is the most important part. So we should go this part slowly. So first thing is we import sys. We need the sys module in our case. So first we try to get the output from OpenAI completion that create methods. So the argument which we need are the model. So basically whatever model you want to use, this are well discussed in my previous blog post and many other blog posts where we discuss about how we use all this same kind of argument, the engine, the prom, the maximum token, the temperature stop, all these things we've discussed in detail. So please refer to them. But the most important and the whole point of making this video is the stream argument to help us to stream the output at real time. Argument which is a Boolean argument as true. And then we try to get the response out of it. So in order to get each and every response from this particular method, we loop over it and then we get this response to choices. And it's basically, and then we access the text. It's basically it's a list format. So we try to access the text out of it. And then we use the sys module, sys.std out is basically right. And we flush 
all of them at a time together. So if I run this particular block of code, you will see each and every word will come one at a time. You see, that's how we want this output to be. So once we test it here in Google Colab, our main task, which is the ultimate task, is to deploy this in a streamlit front end, right? So for that, we need to write again a few lines of code. We know how we can build a streamlit app. We make a directory, we make a Python script file, and then we test it in the local host. So I'll directly skip to all these parts because there are a lot of times I've mentioned about this in my previous video. Videos, check them out and we'll directly go and we see how we can tweak with few these lines of code we need to tweak them while we are trying to use it in Streamlit and we'll mainly focus on that part and then we'll come to this particular app how it was built so the entire code related to the Streamlit web app is in my uh, github youtube tutorials you can just go to openai Streamlit youtube and if, if you go here you'll just find the stream argument and there inside the app.py you will find the entire code for building this web app which I demonstrated. So I'll just copy the first few lines of the code and we'll see how it works. You can have any editor of your choice. So I choose the VS code. I paste it here. I made a new file, the Python file, which is assistant AI stream the demo.py. Okay. And uh, inside that I dump all the codes. I imported all the modules, the import open AI, the streamlit. Streamlit pills is more like a radio button which I use to choose between streaming and non-streaming. And then we have to put the API key for that I use the streamlit.secrets syntax because in streamlit you can actually hide your uh, API key using the secrets.toml which should be located inside the .streamlit folder. So I've described all these things before as well. So please check out the other videos where I described about streamlit, openai, the st API secrets, the openai API key. All these things are there very well demonstrated. The next part is creating a heading using typical streamlit syntax called the st.subheader and then we have the pills which is basically like a radio button choosing no streaming and streaming and then providing a text input which allows the user to, to provide a prompt for the search. So these are the few things we need just to have a quick start, right? And I will run this particular file. So I'll just hit streamlit run and the file is under this multi pages app so it doesn't matter where the file is there at this moment you can just make one single file so it's under assistantai.py so I'll just run it assistantai.py you will see it's like a multi page app which again is a streamlit uh, multi page app configuration or uh, features which we uh, implemented so here's a lot of app you can see we'll just go to this assistantai stream.dim and I place always rerun you see all these things are there uh, you can change the color as I demonstrated before you can do that easily by going to settings uh, from settings I just go to the light color theme and you can just edit the theme also by the way using the uh, primary color to black and yeah and we have it we have our theme which is having the uh, primary color black, and you have the prompt for asking whatever you want it's like a text input box okay once you have this part let's see how in a normal case where there's no streaming how it works it's like a usual case which we have built before as well so for that i will go again back to this particular repository and i will copy few lines of the code let's say we mainly need this part the else loop where we use this thing just paste it here and i will also copy this part where it allows me to add a button and also empty box okay I will tell you what this empty box why it is inside you will mainly see the necessity of the empty box when you use the streaming part okay right now it's just using as a markdown uh, markdown box which will convert to markdown once we say res box dot markdown which we'll use later okay so we'll just see what how it works so we just have a button if there is this button is pressed we go to the completion so let's just put it inside this so if there is a selected is streaming and uh, we say none at this moment else we just dump it with the completion okay that's what we did in the google colab and once we do this thing we can actually dump the razor like we did before in this res box which is basically again the empty box which is acting as a like a markdown syntax place so we just res box dot write we dump the results box which was empty now is now becoming a text box. So we just go here, I say, tell me about uh, OpenAI. And I just submit this part, you will see the result is running now, the completion method is running with all its argument as we did in Google Colab, and it will dump the whole output in the one box format, okay? So here's the output, okay? We have all the output dumped here, but it was not a real time, okay? Once you run it, you will see all coming one 
at a bulk that's not what we want we want the streaming service where the live updates will be there so now that's the crucible that's our aim so for that let's copy more few lines of code from this repository so now we copy this part of the code so we call this if block we will copy that part here the magic lies so we just paste it here and now let's see line by line how it behaves loop over each and everything so we loop over the comp uh, openai completion dot create and then we give all the argument now if you see the stream argument it is true here Whereas the stream argument in case of the no streaming, it's false. That's the critical part, which you also saw in Google Colab. Otherwise, all the arguments are same. We are just looping over the response, whatever we get. Now, let's try to see how it behaves. Okay, so we'll just comment all this part of the code and we'll see. We'll just dump the report, whatever we create. So basically, we have a empty uh, list of a report we create before this for loop and we app go on appending the whatever comes out from the response of this for loop okay and we just dump it we see what it happens and we will see why we need this particular info box but in order to see that let me just also write it down this way uh, st dot markdown and we use this syntax so i think that's the best way we can understand why we need this empty box beforehand the usage of the empty box so i save this part and i will go back to the app and i'll just ask the same question again but this time we'll go to streaming okay and we just press the uh, submit button you see it's going on creating new text field and that's why we need an empty box where every time the same empty box will be populated so this is something which we don't uh, appreciate what we will do instead is we come in this part and here we submit our report every time so now if i hit the submit button you will see in one box all of the report is getting populated this is something which we are happy about this is something which we kind of uh, uh, envisioned at that point but now we don't want this commerce this new line all these things needs to be removed how we can do that we know it's a list format right we already see this list format how we can remove that part that's why these two lines are there so this first line which is joining each and every element of the list and the next line is replacing those uh, like slash in the new line thing which it's just making it an empty one okay that's all that's the thing and once now we have a new result by the we don't have the report anymore we just put it dump it in that markdown box right and we save it and now we just run tell me about openai and we see how it looks like you see it's coming the desired way we want it to this is how we want this is how we want our client to see the results at a live streaming let's try something new now let's say tell me about chat gpt okay this is something which which maybe we are curious like because we were kind of dumping all the information like chat gpt and now we are asking about you see in real time all the outputs are getting updated this is pretty cool right this is something which we envisioned the very start of the tutorial and i hope we reach to that point so let me know what you guys think about this whole tutorial i know it's a very small feature which we try to explore but this is something very crucial it is some a very small argument the stream argument does this whole tricks and i hope you guys will like this video so if you have any feedbacks or any comments or any new suggestion please write down in the comment section and don't forget to like share and also subscribe to my channel cheers